That's the style, not 120 bikes in a funeral procession, which is what Roger based Wild Angels on, <clears throat> but rather the image of the, the John Wayne going across the country and the, the searchers. Yeah. yeah. You just spend your time reading about us. You turn on your radios and you listen about us. Always looking for another guy. Very lucky that you won't try your outlaw. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. And we want to get loaded. Yeah! Fast wheeling and fast for wheels. Always on the phone to love you still, you're an outlaw. Here is the host of Outlaws of the Movies, Robert Walden. Pardon the dust and welcome to Outlaws of the Movies Week. Five movies about men and women who chose to rebel against society by going outside the law. Now another thing these movies have in common is that they were all produced or directed by Roger Corman for American International Pictures. This week's kind of a tribute to Corman and to the special brand of movie making practiced by him and American International. Now, tonight's feature is The Wild Angels. It was made in 1966, and like so many Corman movies, spawned dozens of imitations. It was one of the real breaks for its star, Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra. Peter will be along later to talk with me about this film and his work with Roger Corman. One thing you should know, before we start, though, Corman never had the money for stuntmen or studio interiors or even extras. So what you're going to see are the real actors on the real motorcycles on the real streets of Venice, California. And the Hells Angels are played by, well, the real Hells Angels. Back in the 60s, if a major motion picture studio wanted to show an actor on a chopper like this, they did it the way we're doing it here. This is a real hog, but it's in front of what they call a rear projection screen. It's easy on the gas, but it, you don't cover a lot of ground. Hey, just cut the wind machine for a second. Ah, thanks. This is a neat setup here, but I'm sitting on a soundstage on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, I'll be back a little later with Peter Fonda to tell you more about this extraordinary film. But right now, get your leathers on. Right after this, Peter Fonda, Nancy Sinatra, Bruce Stern, Diane Ladd, and Buck Taylor star in The Wild Angels. Well, it's a long way from Fishkill, New York, isn't it? <laughs> That's where Peter and I did our first summer stock in 1960 for you and 1961 for Tis me. true. Traumatic at that, too. Yeah. It's a big transition from Tammy and the Doctor, too. To, that was traumatic. Two wild angels. How did that feel? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'd preferred uh, Wild Angels by a long shot. It was a lot better, a lot more fun to make, and uh, a lot less restrictive. I enjoyed working with Roger. How'd you meet him? I was interviewed in his office. He w I was brought into his office, and someone said, this is a, a film about motorcycle gangs. So I came in as outrageous as I could. He said, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he cast me as a stiff. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, the, the body? Yeah, I, I played... Uh I played the losers. That was my part at first, the one that Bruce Dern ended up playing. And um, I thought, okay, I can do the loser. That's easy. Uh, Ten grand to play a stiff for three weeks. No sweat. And Roger just slickly ran that right into the lead, which at the time the script was written was called Jack Black. I said I'd play the lead, but I didn't want to be called Jack Black. So I said I'll be called Heavenly Blues. And Roger said, well, why do you want to be called Heavenly Blues? I said, well, you, see, you take 350... Heavenly Blue Morning Glory Seeds, grind them up in a pepper grinder, add a little bit of water and drink it, and in 45 minutes you get a full psychedelic experience. Roger laughed and he said, okay, and then, so that became my name, Heavenly Blues, also known as Henry Blues. But uh, it, was a, it was more exciting, and, and I learned so much working with Roger. On that particular film, Bogdanovich did the second unit on it. Bogdanovich. Yeah. It gave a few people a shot. Uh, how, how, what about the Hells Angels? How did they relate to you as, you know, the son of a famous movie star and relatively straight to their world? They thought I was a total lunatic and they <laughs> loved it. <laughs> I mean, they had a car out there, they had this beautiful old Cadillac, a 48 Cadillac, and we all would jump in the Cadillac and take off and uh, run over our lines in between scenes, you know what I mean? And then anything else that was on That's, the road. Uh, yeah. yeah, a few rabbits here and there. and uh, yeah, next, film was, two. next film with Roger was The Trip, right? The Trip, yeah. 
Um, so in fact, Hopper. Jack Nicholson wrote the trip, and Dennis and I had written two films before we did the trip. Uh, one of them was the storyline for Easy Rider. And it was a chance, well, everyone needed a job. You know, the, the movie industry was in a total slump, so we got all of our friends in there. Bruce got the part in the trip. I wanted Jack to play Bruce's role, but Jack had never really been good as an actor. So uh, Roger had Jersey. That's what everybody it. said. They said he was real kind of uncomfortable and stiff as an actor. And, uh, it's true. It's and funny today to think about it like that. And there's Jack pulling the big ones in, but um, he was good for the part. Anyway, you directed second unit now with Dennis? Yeah. And, and was that like your first time behind the camera at all? The first Truly my first time. I did some of the stuff uh, uh, with Dennis Jacob. Uh, Dennis did all the stuff on the strip when we were running back and forth and I was you know, trying to run away from people. People down the strip. We used infrared film and sun lamps and all sorts of weird things to take the color change and, and do it all over again. But then I edited the last three reels of the film. You know, flash cutting stuff. So I got a chance to really work off behind the camera and in the editing room. And it was all due to Roger and to Sam Arkoff who allowed me to do that and get into it. That's great. And then came Easy Rider. Along came Easy Rider. How did that didn't just come along? Actually, I was in Toronto to uh, promote the trip when I picked up the story for Easy Rider and got on the phone and said, come on, Hopper, you direct, I'll produce, and we'll both act in it. And Roger spent 362000 on Wild Angels, and he gave me a breakdown sheet. And I looked at the breakdown sheet and thought, well, let's take out the Teamsters, let's take out set construction, let's take out the 30000 Let's take out the 30000 from Nancy Sinatra. I'm sorry, Nancy, to bust your price at the time. But we went on, and I thought, I can do the same film for the same amount of money and do it better. Not the same film story-wise, but the same type of film, a genre of film. Instead of, and I, I looked at a picture of me and Dernsey on my chop from um, Wild Angels. We were down in Venice, and the background was blasted out by sand. So it was like a silhouette shot of Derns and myself. And I thought, that's the, that's the style, not 120 bikes in a funeral procession, which is what Roger based Wild Angels on, <clears throat> but rather the image of the, the John Wayne going across the country the and the loners, searchers. Yeah. yeah, You know, the, the loners, exactly. As a matter of fact, that was one of the first working titles for Easy Rider was the loners. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then, of course, it was Captain America, Bucky, and the cocaine incident. That lasted about three and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was that incident? Th that was the when we the top of the film when we scored oh, the little white powder oh, right, in order right, to make right. all the money. Right. You know? And oh boy, I tell you, Sam got so upset. He said, "You can't have that in the film." I said, "What do you mean?" Well, you can't have your heroes dealing in narcotics and dealing in drugs. And Dennis said, "Well, you know, stock uh, brokers are drug dealers too." <laughs> that went over Sam's head, and he didn't like that too much. He said, "Well, what if you did it with grass?" I said, "Sam, we'd have to be hauling huge big bales behind us in order to get enough money to train loads." Nevertheless, uh, as it turned out, uh, Bert Schneider was sitting in the wings and wanted to know um, what kind of movie that was that I was talking to, to uh, Arkoff about. And he said, I'll give you the money and I'll leave you alone. And I said, that sounds good to me. So we went out to do it. Sam still wonders how he came, didn't he get the film. And, uh, what about all the music? News you lose, Sam. <laughs> what about all the, the music in the movie? That was basically my record collection and a bit of Dennis's record collection. And we just cut it together to have music while we cut the film. And uh, I had gone to Stephen Stills, who was a buddy of mine, and David Crosby. And I said, listen, I want you guys to do the soundtrack. And they said, okay, that sounds reasonable. And they came in to see the movie, but it had all the sound in it already. Uh -huh. And Stills says, I can't beat that, and walked down on it. Yeah, the band, I think that was what that really set the band the up. The band wanted to do the soundtrack after they saw the movie, though. At the end, two weeks or two, a week and a half before we're ready to strike Prince, they want to say, all the rest of the movie's terrible except our stuff and Dylan's stuff. <laughs> Well, rock yeah, rock. then you made your d directorial debut in The Hired Hand? Yeah. And once again, I, I put to work uh, the ethics and the attitude of how to take a budget and make it so it is, it is applicable and not stifling. To a lot of people, you can say, you only have 500000 to shoot this film. And we shot Easy Rider for 475000 Actually, we finished shooting at 265000 The rest of it was uh, editing and music. I, I hired hand cost me a mill too. Wow. Of course, I didn't pay myself anything to direct it or to produce it or to uh, to act in it. That brought the price down considerably. But I don't know that you can do that today. A mill two is tough. We shot seven and a half weeks. Last that was week. rocky. That's true. A mill two was rocky. That's true. Uh, well, so w would you rather direct or would you rather act or would you rather write? I'd rather do any one of them at any given time. Yeah, I don't mean simultaneously. But simultaneously, yeah. it, it's a bear. It really is a tough job to do it. I enjoy it when I'm producing. I consider the uh, 
the necessity of being a producer and having a producer on a shoot and the necessity of that producer having an artistic attitude that will help the director and help the actors rather than just being a fellow who looks at the figures and says, that's enough raw stock, you guys have had too much beer in the set and you're taking too much time at lunch. There's a way you can work and be Roger creative. Roger wasn't like that, was he? Roger was very good as a producer. He's real director. courageous. I never had a problem with him as a director or producer. Never felt that uh, we were scrimping on a shot. I never felt that even though we were taking three weeks to shoot the film in, it seemed like it was too long to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's real prepared. He was always I like prepared. That. I remember that. Well, so was George Lucas, you see. Ah. George Lucas is real prepared real when prepared. he goes to shoot. Well, so what, what are you doing now? What's your current stuff? Which I hope to be starting at the end of August. Depends upon when my cameraman's free. Who was uh, that? Michael Butler. Oh. He's a wonderful person. I've been very fortunate in the cameraman I used. Uh, he did Easy Rider. No, he did, um, he did Juan in Nevada with me. He right. did Missouri Breaks, Harry and Tonto, a whole mess of things. He's very good, very fast. On you never wait on camera. You know yeah. how you're always waiting on camera? Glasgow okay. Kovacs did he Kovacs did Ryder. Uh, Zygmunt, Vilmos Zygmunt yeah. did Hired Hand. Bruce Logan did yeah, people, Dido Transfer. People in, I realize that some, that some of the cinematographers in this country have such fans among the people in. I mean, I'm a fan of cinematographers. I'll go to see films just because I know who shot it. Yeah. I don't but think anyway, they're paid enough. I'm a fan of yours. I, I'll tell you Thank that. Thank you, Robert. I'm a fan of yours. Okay. Where's Billy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we drive down to the sweet shop and get a strawberry phosphate? Hey, hurry back, honey. I missed you already. Okay. Hi, I'm Rob Word. I hope you enjoyed our A Word on Entertainment. There's plenty to see. If you've missed some, just subscribe right here. Tell your friends and share. Enjoy yourself. I know I did.